This week on Silver Screen, school board candidates court local voters, the Yellow Jackets get stung again, and the girls' tennis team continues its winning season. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, October 10th, and, and your, your Silver, Silver Screen report starts, starts now. Jamie, what do you think of that new intro for the show? I liked it. Over the course of the next five weeks, we're going to show you one new intro each week. Each intro was created as a part of our advisor's challenge to the Silver Screen staff. Then, in the spirit of election week, on November 7th, we'll ask you to visit foxfusion.org to vote for the one you like the best. Speaking of voting, the midterm elections are less than a month away in addition to statewide races for governor and superintendent of education. Our school board will be chosen as well. This Tuesday, the first forum for the Richland County candidates took place at Spring Hill High School. Michaela Baker checks it out. Five candidates took part in the Richland County Forum, each running to improve an aspect of District 5. I want to keep our, our class size policy in place that benefits teachers and students. My goal for the students and the um, parents and teachers and all the stakeholders of this school district, if elected, is to be sure to represent the district in a very high manner. I think the first goal I'd have is to make sure that the district, the school board, the entire district is financially sound. Right now, we're running at a deficit from what I understand. And that's the biggest part is if you have the money, you can do the things that you need to do. That teachers are, have all the resources and everything they knew, need to do, uh, do what they need to do in classrooms with our, with our students. And we want to make sure, make sure that our students are prepared. My biggest uh, achievement would be make sure that the district continues to grow in the right direction and also that it's, that it's funded to make sure that we continue to have the facilities and the technology for the students. Challenges come with running for the district board. The challenges that I am having to overcome as a candidate for the Lexington Richland School District 5 School Board is regaining the community's trust and uh, ensuring the, the community and the students and the parents that all decisions are being made um, to solely protect and support students and teachers. Campaign's always challenging because of time it takes, a time away from your family, time away from your job. Um, but I've done it a couple of times, so what you do is you get used to it, you kind of know what you got to do, when you got to do it, and then you got to raise money too. If elected, each candidate has their own vision for the district. My main goal is to continue the excellence that we've had today. Right, my vision for District 5 is to make sure we continue the growth, continue the excellence that the district has shown over the years, uh, continuing to, uh, to improve upon where we are. All children will be uh, globally competitive and the best at whatever it is that they want to achieve. To make sure that all of the teachers and all of the students have everything they possibly need to be successful. The next forum will be held for the Lexington County candidates at Chapin High School on October 23rd. This has been Michaela Baker with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT word of the week is validate, a noun meaning to confirm, support, or corroborate. This week was Spirit Week for Homecoming, and last week there was a pep rally leading up to the Irmo game. Here's a recap of both events. Students cheering and chanting can only mean one thing, the first pep rally of the year leading up to the Irmo versus Dutch Fork game. The rally prepares the, the team and the students by just getting everybody hyped, getting the word out there that this is an Irmo game, this is a big deal. Pep Rally is really designed to uh, pump everybody up in the different way possible. It just, it makes it more aware. There are certain parts of the Pep Rally that students enjoyed the most. I love seeing people play the games. Like I love just everybody just coming together and just having fun. My favorite part about the Pep Rally this year, this year that is, was because I'm senior class president, I got to lead the seniors in. Pep club, dazzlers, and cheerleaders involved in a pep rally help get the student body more excited for the game. Being pep club leader is great. I feel more involved and I'm glad that I can use my energy to allow people to get hype for games and events. I enjoy dancing at pep rallies because it really gives the dazzlers a chance to get out there and show who we are and show everybody what we've been working on and all the hard work that we're putting in. Students showcase their school spirit by taking part in Spirit Week. 
We've been in school for a good amount of weeks now, and now we just get to come to school, dress up, um, you know, have a good laugh at what we're wearing, and everyone has a good time. I think they hold Spirit Week to get everyone excited for the game and to display their spirit. Spirit Week and pep rallies unify the school. It's like a family kind of feeling, like Dutch Fork family. Like, Irmo doesn't have it, Chapin doesn't have it like we do. We're one. This has been Jamie Gilbert Fitzpatrick with your Sewer Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students about their ideal dress up days for Spirit Week. College Colors Day because it'd be fun to see what students go for what college and where they would like to go. If I had to pick a day, it'd probably be Senior Citizen Day. I think it'd be really fun to see everyone dressed up as old people. I think Disney Day would be really cool just because it's a cool way for people to be creative and dress up. Um, I would choose Food Day because I love food and I think everybody else loves food and I would dress up as a food. The Fox Fridge is back. Occasionally throughout the year, we'll give you tips and tricks for preparing an easy and tasty recipe. This week, Ariana Mount makes a fall treat. You will need a box of Rice Krispie treats, five and a half cups of marshmallows, large pretzels, vanilla extract, a stick of butter, red food coloring, and yellow food coloring. Cut the butter into three tablespoons. Next, in a large saucepan, melt the butter on medium heat. Once it is completely smooth, add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract into the pot. Now add the marshmallows and stir until completely melted. Add about 12 drops of yellow food coloring and 4 drops of red or until the desired orange color is reached. Add the 6 cups of Rice Krispies into the pot. Turn off the heat when all of the cereal is covered. While waiting for the Rice Krispies to cool, begin breaking the pretzels in curved pieces. After a few minutes, spray your hands with cooking oil and begin molding the Rice Krispies into balls. Now, take the pretzels and press them into the top of the pumpkins to represent stems. As an additional step, you can use cream cheese icing to decorate the pumpkins how you please. Enjoy! This has been Ariana Mount for your Silver Screen Report. Hey Jamie, did you go to the game last week? Yeah, I did, and the rain didn't stop the Silver Foxes from being the Irma Yellow Jackets in the annual rivalry game. Jacob Sprinkle was on the sidelines. <laughs> Fans cheer and rain pours as the Silver Foxes beat Irmo with a final score of 27-7. I thought the team played good. I mean, not in the first half. I mean, we had a couple missed opportunities. Um, it was definitely wet, but it was really fun. I feel like we all came together as a school, even though it was pouring rain, um, and cheered on our team. I think they played well, um, considering the conditions, and they got the result that they were heading for. So, I mean, pretty good outing, I would say. Pretty good performance. Students came in with high expectations and plenty of hype because the game was against rival team Irmo. So it was crazy, like everyone was all excited because it's the Irmo game, right? And the best part was probably when we won and everyone like freaked out. Everybody was everybody was a little extra hyped up. I mean, it's just one of those things like, you know, Irmo and Dutch Fort, it's like Clemson and USC, you know, it's an annual rivalry that we expect every year. We had more students come than any other game since it was Irmo and we all really wanted to beat them since we lost last year. I mean, as it rained, I felt like our intensity increased with the rain. So, I mean, everybody was hype, and I don't feel like there was a less turnout due to the weather. I feel like we really got behind our team. I think it was because of the rivalry game. I think it doesn't matter what the score was as long as we came out on top. This has been Jacob Sprinkle for your Silver Screen Report. So Maddie, did you manage to catch any of the girls' tennis matches this week? No, and I'm sorry I missed a chance. Luckily, Daniel Hudson is ready to give us a scoop on the team. A powerful heat wave beats down on the girls' tennis team, but they continue their warm-ups undeterred. The team is driven to train for their upcoming game against Spring Valley, but also because of their will to succeed. I started playing tennis when I was four years old, and I started playing competitively when I was seven. And I just love tennis. It's really easy to get hooked onto. Once you start playing, you just want to be out there all the time. And it's just a fun sport that you can play till you're super old. And um, there's a lot of people, especially in Columbia, that love playing tennis. So it's just a really good sport to play. Like the team. It's like a really good group of girls, and I've been playing on the team with our five seniors for a really long time, so we're really close, and we have a really close bond with each other, and that's what makes the team fun. You know, it gives the girls an, um, a chance to get out and play a sport and excel at a sport that they're good at. 
With their season well underway, the girls of the tennis team are pumping themselves up for a possible championship. Well, this year we have a really awesome team. Um, we have a really close bond on this team. We've actually been to the state championship two years, and so this year it's just been a lot of energy trying to get back our third time. There's a lot of seniors this year, so it's kind of like our last chance, and so we're definitely giving everything our best and um, trying to make all of our hard work past few years pay off. I hope we win state and we go undefeated. Our hopes for this season are the state championship. I think that's what all of our eyes are on um, at this point. Well, we're hoping for the state playoffs um, or the actually the state finals, the championship this year. Um, you know, we've got a lot of talent and hopefully we can pull it out this year. Tennis may not be the most popular sport at Dutch Fork, but the players' dedication and enjoyment cannot be denied. It's nice, it's fun. I enjoy being out there and like being athletic and doing something productive. A lot of the starters this year are seniors, and so we're just hoping to make the most of our last year. We have a really strong ladder. Everyone's pretty even throughout, so we're doing good against um, the toughest teams. The final outcome of the match on Tuesday was a victory for the Dutch Fork girls, 5-1 over Spring Valley. This has been Daniel Hudson with your Silver Screen Report. Tonight is a homecoming game. Be sure to vote for this year's homecoming court today during all lunches. Here's another look at the candidates. I'm Anna. And I'm James. And we represent Cross Country. I'm Michaela Baker. And I'm Josh M. Holt. And we're representing The Renaissance. Hey, I'm Jocelyn. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Emmanuel. And we represent the Dutch Fork Marching Band. Hey, I'm DeAndrea, and I'm representing Volleyball. I'm Danielle Steger. Hi, I'm Forbes Zealand. And, and we, we represent, represent Senior, Senior Board. Board. Hey, I'm Kayla Braun. And I'm Graham Ellis. And, and we're, we're representing, representing Student Council. Council. Hi, my name is Jennifer Quinlan, and I'm representing your book. This is Caroline Sloop. And he's Thomas Lucas. And we represent Varsity, Varsity Tennis. Tennis. I'm Kyle. And I'm Anna Maria. And we're Teacher Cadet. My name is Joshua <laughs> Bristow. I'm Sydney Harrison. And we're representing the Drama Club. Actors Anonymous. I'm Darla Nitch. And I'm Blake Ellis. And we're representing Pep, Pep Club. Club. I'm Olivia Rosinski. I'm Brett Winters. And we represent STEM. He's Park Patel for Key Club. And she's Ariana Mount for Junior Civitans. I'm Eric Pat Suarez. And I'm Josh Brumagen. And we're representing the swim, the swim team. team. <laughs> I'm Courtney, and I'm representing Varsity Cheerleading. I'm Stephanie Chow, and I'm representing Silver Fox Cheerleading Booster Club. I'm Josh Carter. And I'm Nicole Easley. And we, and we represent, represent Facts Club. Club. I'm Gordon. I'm Carly. And we represent TSA. I'm Cassie. And I'm Robert. We, we represent Interact Club. Club. Hi, I'm Tyler Mack. My organization is Alive at 25. This is Garrett. This is Hannah. And we represent Dutch Forks FCA. FCA. I'm Kyra Steele and I represent Dutch Fork Book Club. Hey y'all, I'm Nicole Pugh and I'm representing the girls golf team. Hi, I'm Jacob Otis. And I'm Zoe Johnson. And, and we, we represent, represent Lit Mag. Mag. My name is Bryant. And I'm Joanna. And we're representing RGC. My name is T Dai, and I'm representing the Dazzler's Dance Team. I'm Jacob. And I'm Jamie, and we're representing Silver, Silver Screen. Screen. My name's Anthony. And I'm Emily. And we we're are representing, representing Lacrosse. Lacrosse. I'm Caroline Sinegar. And I'm Ms. Humphrey. And we're kicking it in homecoming court for Dutch Fork <laughs> Soccer. I'm Matthew Colburn. I'm representing Dutch Fork Football. Now for some announcements. PTSO is selling spirit gear on Tuesdays during all lunches. Jostens will be here all day Tuesday in the lobby in front of the arena for senior graduation supply orders. Seniors, your makeup pictures are next Thursday. You will need to sign up for an appointment time. This is your last chance to get your senior picture in the yearbook. Remember, iPad makeup distribution is every Thursday in the Media Center. See Mrs. Applin for details. There is no school on Monday. Right now the forecast has plenty of sun with high winds in the mid 80s and the lows in the mid 60s. Go enjoy the state fair. There will be no delayed opening next Wednesday. Sophomores and select juniors will be taking the PSAT during 5B and 6B. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next Friday. Poor or corrupt, corrupt. I cannot say that word. Your turn. Yay! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I just want to sit there and go, the whole time? Yep. Like that. Okay. And the. Oh, messed that one up. Mama's good. <laughs> You're going to mess up this one, watch. No.
or get out. Get out. <laughs>